rise. The Everything Lydia Show is now in session. Lydia the lawyer presiding. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> Here we are again. Again. All right, so what is... Oh, wait, I forgot. This courtroom has to... To get in order. <laughs> Come to order. <laughs> Come to order. Thank you. <laughs> because we are out of control. All right. So what's on the calendar for today? The first segment, of course, will be Ask Lydia the Lawyer. Yes. Where I will be discussing wills, well, right, wills or without. What is the, What are the circumstances if you have a will and you die? And what happens if, if you, you don't. don't have a will mm -hmm. and you die? The without. Okay. Yes. Second thing we're going to talk about, second matter on the calendar Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> We're going to be talking about pantyhose in the kitchen. kitchen. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to show some eco-friendly ways that you can recycle, in this case, pantyhose. And what did we call that segment? I don't recall. Oh, domicile defense. Ah, da uh, dazzling domicile. Dazzling domicile, that's yes. correct. We're trying to incorporate those legal terms in mm. our segments everywhere. And finally... Oh, and there's going to be a great video, so that's going to be really a lot of fun. I can't wait to play that. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to be opening up the Everything Lydia Show Glamoir. And this should be good, too. Stephanie, first time. you're going to, yes, it's the first time. We're going mm -hmm. to talk about spring fashions for this spring, 2014. And look at us. We're in spring colors. Yes. The first Isn't time, I think. Although it's still cold outside, no, but we're I ready. I don't care. So we're going to it's be time. talking about the do's and the don'ts of fashions. Yes. All right. So let's move right on to the Ask Lydia the Lawyer. And uh, this is something that I've been talking to a lot of clients about for many years. People come to me all the time and they say, all right, Lydia, um, do I need a will? And if I do need a will, you know, what do I have to do? What are the formalities? What needs to happen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing um, I usually do is I explain what a will is. And a will, of course, is a written a uh, document which designates or identifies how you want your um, assets to be distributed. Okay? There are certain formalities that you must follow in order to have a valid will. Mm -hmm. So for example, it has to be in writing. You cannot do uh, uh, you know, a verbal audio tape or anything like that, although they do have video wills. So I've seen that, but mm -hmm. we'll have to, that's a different topic. So let's just talk <laughs> about the writing. <laughs> but it does need to be signed, so it probably does have to have some writing. But there yeah. might be some little nuances. So, so it has to be in writing. It must be signed by the person who is actually giving away their property pursue, under the will. Mm -hmm. um, there need to be two witnesses. So that's very important. And, and the witnesses have to sign within 30 days of you actually executing the will. And also you have to be 18 year, years old in order to validly uh, you know, and lawfully execute a will. Can okay. one of the witnesses or both of the witnesses be someone in that will that you're leaving things to? You, you can, but I would uh, definitely counsel against that. I would think because mm -hmm. people can say that there might have been some type of duress or undue influence over that individual. Right. So I would say it's better to have uh, just third parties. Usually mm -hmm. it's done in a, in a lawyer's office, so you have the secretary, you have another attorney, or you have whomever. So And, it, and also it usually gets notarized, so that's another thing that happens. Okay. Now, the word probate basically means that you have a valid will and it goes, it gets filed with the court and it, is, it starts the process of um, get, getting recognition for the individual who is appointed as executor under the will. That is the person who's kind of like the, the person in charge. Okay. And they're going to uh, take care of the distributions and take care of the taxes and whatever needs to be done. Okay, so a lot of the questions that come up usually are, for example, you have a married couple and they have children. So they're going to say, well, do I need to uh, identify a guardian in the will? Of course, I always say that's a good idea because, God forbid, there's a simultaneous death. You want to have someone designated as the guardian in your will. So that's a very important thing we do. Um, debts. Again, many, many <laughs> times I get the question, what if I have a bunch of debts? Do I have who, who pays them? Well, if it's a joint asset, it immediately... Uh, reverts to the person, the other person. Excuse me, the joint tenant. <laughs> Tickle. Everything Lydia Show mug. <laughs> mm. Oh boy, live TV. <clears throat> and then what happens is, since it's a joint prop, <laughs> joint property, it stays outside of the estate. So that works out really well. However, um, the debts are typically paid. The funeral expenses and credit card bills and things like that are, are paid right off the top. Right, that comes ha off the top. However, mm -hmm. there's a caveat here. Um, there is a provision under the EPTL, States Powers and Trust Law in, the, in New York State, that does allow for certain property 
to be exempt from probate. Now, many people don't know about this. However, certain furniture, appliances, computers valued up to $10,000. Books, family Bible, things like that, um, up to $1,000. Domestic animals and their necessary food for up to 60 days. Really? <laughs> yeah, these are very interesting little nuances here. Farm machinery, one tractor, and one lawn tractor not exceeding a value of $15,000, which is very relevant tractor. on Long Island. Uh, <laughs> although maybe in Riverhead or Audi, perhaps that is relevant. A car worth up to $15,000. And finally, money or other personal property not exceeding $15,000. So that actually, that exempt property vests immediately upon death. So the surviving mm -hmm. sp spouse will get that property or, in the alternative, the children. And people don't realize that that is exempt. So if there are debts that are underneath that, again, there's, there's always nuances. So I'm going to give a disclaimer and say what I'm telling you are generalities. Depending on the circumstances, whatever you know, the facts are in any particular yeah. case, it might be a little different. But did you know that? No, I did not. It was an exempt property. So I that's, that's that. to start out. All right. Can I change my will or revoke it? And how do you do that? This is how you. This is how you can basically revoke your will. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Like that. <laughs> That's easy. That's one way of revoking your will. You basically <laughs> burn it or tear it up or whatever you want to do. Another way is to create a, a, a codicil, and um, I usually don't recommend that, and I'll tell you why. Ask me why. Why? <laughs> why don't you recommend that? I don't that? recommend it because you need to use the same formalities with the codicil as you do your will to begin with. So you might as well revisit it and just re-execute the will because it's the same thing. You already have it and I don't know, I'm not a big fan of codicils. All right, this is a good one. Can I disinherit someone? Oh. New York State provides that you cannot disinherit your spouse. And that came about many, many, many years ago because there were individuals who had lovers and, the, you know, very interesting case Even law in Even in that. the middle of a divorce proceeding, let's say, you, well, they're the, technically still your spouse. Well, you cannot. see, that's a different, again, nuances. Every case is different because if you're, the minute you file for a divorce, there's a, there's a, like a, a little uh, ding, ding, ding clock that starts. <sighs> so marital property at that point, that's the cutoff point. So what happens, they're still technically married. There is no formal divorce. Just because you have a divorce proceeding, True. you're still married. Okay. But in that case, like I said, until you get a judgment of divorce, then people say, well, what if it hasn't been filed yet? That's, again, <laughs> a lot of case law on that issue. Okay. Um, if you try to disinherit a spouse, the spouse in that case is entitled to receive what's called an elective share. And basically that is whatever the... It's an amount equal to at least $50,000 off the top of the estate or one-third of the decedent spouse's net estate. Now, there's been so much litigation with regards to well, what exactly is the net estate. So there's always litigation, always nuances. But by and large, generally speaking, mm -hmm. you can't disinherit. The spouse will get, husband or wife or whoever it is, mm -hmm. 50000 or a third, a third of the net estate, whichever is greater. So that is called the right of election. If you, you can disinherit your children, but what I always recommend is name them specifically in the will because there have, again, there's been case law that has said that, oh, it was a mistake. You know, we forgot to put it in. The lawyer made a mistake or whatever the case may be. So if you specifically want to disinherit a child, say to them in the will, have them write mm -hmm. for reasons best known to me, um, I chew, uh, you know, I have given my child whatever, and I, they are not receiving anything under this will or something along those lines. Okay, so that's for the children. Um, a spouse can also waive their right of election, and the way they do that is usually through a prenup, which you know we've all heard about, and you can sign a prenup and you can waive your right of election. But uh, again, there's, there's so many, that's why th this type of law having to do with wills, it's not just a, a plain black and white it's not so topic. It isn't, right. Mm -hmm. um, now the, the uh, prenup also has to be signed and notarized just like any other regular, like a contract. So that's, that's important. Um, common law marriage. A lot of people ask me, they're like, well, I've been living with my girlfriend, boyfriend for 20 years. It's popular. Guess yeah. what? Yeah. If it's just in New York, then you're not gonna receive anything. Nothing through intestacy or, or, you know, well, you, you, can, you don't even have standing to potentially contest the will because mm. you don't have standing. However, this is interesting though, if the marriage was validly contracted in a state that allows for common law ma marriage, for example, South Carolina, so if you guys 
you know, hold yourself out as husband and wife in South Carolina, and you go to some hotel, and you're married, and you're not really married, <laughs> arguably, New York would have to recognize the common law marriage, which I thought was very interesting. All right, hand handwritten wills, I don't recommend it. There's just too much controversy, too many errors, changes. You can do it, but I certainly recommend that there it not be a written will. It's just a lot easier with initials. I mean, the courts actually get so crazy that if uh, usually there's something called a, a back or a blue back or whatever backing that's on the will. If mm -hmm. the staples are taken out of the will, yeah, you have to get a separate affidavit and you mm -hmm. have to show that this was, you know, the, the, the law office had to unstaple it to make photocopies. It was a mistake, yada, yada, right. yada. It wasn't tampered with. Exactly, exactly. But there are circumstances sometimes. You're in the hospital, you're told now this is an emergency, you have to have surgery and mm -hmm. you have no will. And right. at that point, what are you supposed to do? Well, that's why I always recommend that you do this well in advance. Right, but in that case, in handwritten would have to do. You, it, it can be, as long as it and has it the formalities, up. if it's signed and if the witnesses are there and there's, you know, because again, this is all, this is evidence and there might be a hearing, someone might contest it. Uh, there would be a hearing and there'd be evidence. It'd be like a trial, like any other trial. Yeah. Remember Anna Nicole Smith? Remember the whole trial with her? Oh, and wow, the, yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we saw what happened with that case. Um, I think also what's important is that people understand um, you die with a will, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. It goes through probate. Mm -hmm. Usually, not always, and I'll get to that in a second. If you die without the will, you die intestate. And in New York State, even if you identify certain assets in your will, for example, you have a living trust, you have life insurance proceeds, mm -hmm. you have a, a, an IRA, 401k, and that has a designated beneficiary, that, even if it's listed in the will, that's not going to be part of the estate. And people make that, mis make that mistake. They actually m state or reference that. But that is, is a mistake. Doesn't it's count. erroneous. That is correct. Gotcha. Um, th those assets will actually pass to the surviving co-owner or the beneficiary that's designated there. All right, so if you die intestate, generally this is what happens. Uh, children, if they survive, right, and there's no spouse, the children get everything. Simple, right? Uh, spouse but no decedents, i.e. children or anyone else, the spouse inherits everything. So this is, again, so, so in certain instances, if you don't have a will, and you have a spouse, it's simple, no problem with that. Mm -hmm. If you have a spouse in decedents, this is where it gets a little, a little hairy, or could get a little hairy, because there's children. Then you have the spouse inherits the first $50,000, so it's the same amount, right. but it's not the greater of it. They get 50,000 plus one half of the balance of the estate. And again, estate is a very general, I'm gonna say net estate, there's a lot of different uh, uh, components to that. So. Unlike right of election, which is the greater of 50 or a third, in this case, it's 50 plus a half. Okay, that's if there's kids. And then you have the decedents inherit everything else, so the children would, would get that. Parents but no spouse or decedents, parents inherit everything. And siblings with no spouse, decedents or parents, siblings inherit everything. So that's a global idea, generally wow. what happens. Again, it's a little, very complex. There's a couple of volumes of the EPTL and the uh, what CPA. What if it's your second spouse, yeah. you have children in the first marriage, children in the well, second marriage. I'm so glad you, you I'm so glad you, you mentioned that I because why. We <laughs> no, quickly I'm going to go through it. Adopted children, um, if they're legally adopted, they are your children. They're going to receive just like any other child. Okay. Foster children, stepchildren, um, if they were never legally adopted, they will not automatically receive a share. Okay, unless they were adopted. Mm -hmm. Ch uh, uh, posthumous children, children conceived by you but not born before your death, will receive a share. So you you you, you have uh, your your wife or well your wife. I, could, I was gonna say husband, but your husband can't be pregnant. You what? <laughs> wife is pregnant and you die. The husband and that's that child is born. So that's what happens in, those, in that case. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, grandchildren only receive a share if their parent has died before you. Okay. okay. And uh, half relatives, half. Siblings, okay, mm -hmm. that is your sister with whom you share a father but not a mother. They have the same rights to the property because it's still your father. So if your father passes okay. away, half mm -hmm. the children. Um, immigration status, you do not have to be a citizen of the United States in order to receive money. Interesting. Okay. Um, and a joint tenant convicted of murder. Guess what? You murder your spouse, you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> That's not happening. You're not going to receive anything under the will. Okay, I've been asked a couple of questions specifically from some viewers, which yes. I get an email. 
This is one. My mother left a very small estate. Is there an easy way for me to proceed? That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, if the value of the estate is under $30,000, which is, again, exclusive of, of certain types of assets, the clerk can, in fact, um, consider it to be a small estate. And it's a dollar filing fee. And uh, the proceeding is available for persons with or without a will, and it's considered a, a, a small proceeding, so they don't have to really go through the whole rigmarole. So That's it's a little good. bit easier. Okay. Again, subject to many caveats. It's not <laughs> as simple as just, okay, well, you know, go to, oh, to, go to the clerk. You've got to ask Lydia the lawyer. Yeah. Next question is, my father died, and the only asset is his house. Okay. Do mm -hmm. I have to file a proceeding in surrogate's court to have it turned over to my siblings and to me? I've had this issue so many times. When you're doing a real estate transaction and you have uh, the, the children who are looking to sell the house of their parents who passed away, it's a little more challenging nowadays. The banks are getting a little stricter, but by and large, you don't have to actually go through the formalities of, of transferring the deed. They will take the letters uh, a testamentary or of administration, mm -hmm. you know, with a will or without a will, um, and they will they'll give you an affidavit. You have to sign that. But it is a lot easier that if you do have the, the opportunity to actually have the will transferred from, let's say, mom and dad to the children, I would highly recommend it. It's just a lot easier, cleaner, and uh, you know the deed will come up. So that's, that's that. All right, what else do we have here? Can I prevent the beneficiaries of my will from challenging my will after my death? Good question, right? Because yeah, you don't want to leave people contest today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, it's called a non, uh, excuse me, a no contest clause, and basically the will is going to say something along the lines of, if anyone who's a beneficiary um, under this will contests the will, they get nothing. So that prevents people oh. from contesting the will. Mm -hmm. So that's an important one. And finally, uh, an executor, yes, they get a percentage of the estate. Usually executors are family members, and sometimes they waive, sometimes they don't. I can tell you about how many situations and circumstances where a relative like, you're taking that money! <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you are entitled to a percentage, and it's a, it's a sliding scale. It's not a ton of money, but it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I mentioned um, earlier who can contest the will. And like I said, it, you have to have standing. You have to be an individual who would be potentially receiving um, some, you know, benefit if uh, if there w if there was no will and things like that? So a relative, you know, it's, it can't be this some, some guy off the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, gotcha. so basically, in a nutshell, wow. right? In a nutshell, I tried. That's I tried. a big nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> in a nutshell. Um, so you know, just to repeat again, I, I would say it's very important to take care of um, having a will executed husband and wife, they have reciprocal wills, they basically mirror each other. Um, joint property does not go through the estate. There are certain exemptions, there are certain formalities that mm -hmm. need to be followed. It's just a lot easier to uh, potentially, if you can, go to an attorney. There's, there's people who know what they're doing. And plus, an attorney would sit with you and they're going to go through your assets and they're going to say to you, look, you can create a trust, you can save taxes by doing this or doing that, whatever the case may be. So doing it on your own is not necessarily going to be beneficial right. to um, you know, your family members to the estate and to the people who survive you. Right. I think as soon as people have children, it is something they should do. Yes, exactly. And I, I just as a, a little aside, living will is basically just a memorialization of what your health care kind of directives are. Um, it's it's, it's uh, some evidence of what your wishes were. But it's not, uh, again, there's so many controversies right. and so many cases factors. that come up about that. And then finally, a healthcare proxy is that just a written document that designates certain choices you've made in advance about feeding tubes, about you know, nutrition, about hydration, pulling the plug. Yeah. So things like that. All important stuff. All right. So there we go. The well, educational great. component. Now we're yeah. going to transition into something a little more fun. Dazzling domicile. <laughs> <laughs> a little crazy. All right, so um, remember we were thinking about, all right, what are we going to do? Here at the Everything Lydia Show, we like to be eco-friendly, mm -hmm. yet we're all about lifestyle, right? Because it's not just Lydia the lawyer, it's Lydia the lifestyle lawyer. Everything. So yes. what we did was Steph and I created a video of how you can take all those old pantyhose that we all have can you imagine the amount of money that women spend on pantyhose alone? It's insane. Oh, it's crazy. And the minute you get a run, which and I'm not going to comment on the seconds. run that you have, but what do you do with all those pantyhose when, you know, they have holes or knee highs or whatever the case may be? So watch this video, and uh, we're going to give you some ideas, and we'll see you in a few. Kitchen. 
And today we're going to share some very practical tips about how you can be eco-friendly, you can recycle, and you can make your life a lot easier in the kitchen. So stay tuned. Here we are with Stephanie, the beautiful bailiff. Hi, Steph. Steph, I have a question for you. Yeah. What do women have a lot of? Oh, women have a Ooh. lot. <laughs> Pantyhose. <laughs> Every color. Oh, we got some fishnets in here. Look at this. Yes, Woo! knee highs, fishnets, beige, Stockings, black, every highs. color you could think of. Woo what we're going to do today is teach you how to recycle pantyhose and, like I said earlier, make your life a little easier in the kitchen. Oh, there's the wine. <laughs> Not too far. <laughs> um, Lydia? You're in the kitchen with a pair of pantyhose and a bowl of onions. Can I just ask why? <laughs> nice, Don't be silly. Well, the reason why I'm holding these pantyhose is because we're going to teach our audience today how you can use pantyhose to help preserve your onions, your potatoes, and your garlic. Seriously? Yes, you can. Steph, why don't you show us how you can use pantyhose? to preserve onions. Okay, here goes. Take your pair of pantyhose. Wash them to... first. Uh, okay, yes, we have to wash them first. <laughs> Good point, well made. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take an onion and drop it down one leg so it gets down to the foot. Okay, make sure it's down at the bottom. And tie a knot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. So far, so good. All right. It's a nice go... knot. I'm gonna try and go quickly. Hey, I was a Girl Scout. All right, and just keep doing this and tying a knot. Love each onion if they cooperate with you. <laughs> Look at the bouncing. You know, if this, were, <laughs> if this were live TV, we'd have a problem. <laughs> okay, so you just keep filling the stocking like this. And the idea is you're going to end up with five or six onions in one leg. When you are full mm -hmm. or it's full, right. you're going to hang it in a cool place such as your garage. One. We are now in my garage and this is what Stephanie made. Nice. So now you can see the potatoes on one side and the onions on the other, sort of. So what you've got to do is you've got to find a hook like this and you're going to hang it. So at the end, you're going to take the bottom, take a scissor, snip it off, and there's your onion or potato, whatever you have, and being in a cool place with the pantyhose the air goes through and you could avoid onions rotting Ooh. like this Steph yeah are there any other ways that we can use pantyhose in the kitchen I heard you can make a cup of coffee with a knee high okay. here's the knee high this is what you do you roll it down you take your coffee with the scooper and you simply put the measured amount right into the knee high then you tie it and voila, you have oh. coffee in the knee high. Put it into your Everything Lydia Show mug. Come over here to the Instant Hot. Fill it up. And here you go. Instant coffee. Take a look at this. Woohoo! Wait. You know what I hate? I hate lumps, especially in my gravy. You know how you can get rid of the lumps in your gravy? Watch. Knee high, right? Gravy boat. You pour the gravy. Whoopsie! Whoopsie! <laughs> <laughs> you scrape out all the all the lumpy part. Put it right through that, and you just take off the knee high. Whoops! Right? And you're gonna squeeze it a little. <laughs> Let it drain out. And ready? <laughs> it's a little messy. Put the gravy back into the pan. I would have scraped it a little bit more. And voila, lumpless. You know how else you can use pantyhose? You put it into a little ball like this and you could use it as a dish scrubby. And it will not harm any nonstick pans either. Here we go, take this, a little soap, and scrub away. You have your eggs and cheese. You can either use the pantyhose or you could give it to the doggy. They clean things really well, and then you just put it right in the dishwasher. Hey, Steph, I see you're playing with the pantyhose there. Oh, yeah. Yes, I know. 
Let's talk, check out the shoes. Ooh, look at the Ooh. boots. Oh, do I see a scuff on the beautiful boot? Where? Oh, no. Uh, yes. No worries, Lydia. We can use pantyhose to get rid of scuffs on shoes. Oh, let's Just see. ball it up like you did. Uh-huh. And where is it? Oh, okay. There it no is. worries. <laughs> we'll rub that right out. Beautiful. See? Beautiful. And nice shoes, by the way. One last tip for you. Mm -hmm. You can also use pantyhose yes. to create a lovely hairnet. Hairnet. Yes, and yes. make sure you get the right, the right color that right matches color. your hair. Blonde and brunette. So you look nice and glamorous like a domestic goddess. No and one. that's it. So there you have it. Those are all the things you can do with pantyhose in the kitchen, or at least some of them. See, See ya. ya. Bye. So there we go, Steph, you know, I made that coffee using a knee <laughs> um, I knew you would do that to me. What did you think? <laughs> I thought that was a great way of, right? Eco I think we very creative. I love it. All right, so look what we have here, right? This is your necklace. <laughs> These are actually the Blue. potatoes that we wrapped in the pantyhose. Well, here are the onion, the, the uncooperative onion, here it is. Yeah, so I mean, this is, this is actually <clears throat> really I know it's kind of fun, and we try to add humor to, to our segments and stuff. Oh. But I like the shoe one where, guess who shoes? Oh, here, you. <laughs> I'm not putting my leg up. However, I don't know if you can use the, you get the scuffs off of this, but pantyhose actually are really good for so many things, including, like we oh, said, cleaning. Yes, you use it to take this off. I got lipstick off of the edge of the mug with the pantyhose. All right. Well, anyway, so that was our, our eco-friendly <laughs> segment having to do with pantyhose in the kitchen and how to make your life easier. Next. Next. We're right. going to talk about some spring fashions. You're on. Do's and don'ts. I was okay. flipping through the magazines this weekend. Yes. Looking at the spring trends. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you some spring trends. Okay. And how it can be worn well. And then we're going to go over some of the trends. Not so The well. do's and don'ts. Let's, okay. let's start. All right. First, first one. We have like five trends, okay? Florals. Pretty, okay. right? I love florals. I love florals. We have a nice pattern. It can be worn head to toe. Mm -hmm. If you have a skirt on, wear a solid top, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What shouldn't you do with floral? Oh boy, I can only imagine. Okay, Let me we guess. all know this one, right? Oh boy, let's not Kim wear. It. You know, I have to tell you. I mean, she was, she's pregnant. You have to cut pregnant ladies some slack. But do you have to wear head to toe turtleneck long sleeve floral when yeah. you're looking like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think she could have done a lot um, better. And the pants and the jacket, it's just too much. And it, I love yeah. the flower. Come on. Yeah, it's when you try and do too much. Too, too exactly. busy. It, it just doesn't work. And something yeah. else that does not work with floral, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm shocked at this one. Men. <gasps> no. Floral for men. No. Would you put Steven in I, one of these suits? Never. Yeah? <laughs> I, I, I can understand so. floral um, trunks, you know, like the Hawaiian kind of look. That's great. Yeah, but, that's but anything besides that? No. <laughs> I don't think so. That's a knot. Okay, That's next a knot. one. Oh, next one. Here we go. Look, look, look. We okay. got this today. We got a little bit of fringe going fringes. on. Fringes. I love fringe. fringes too. Fringe is nice, right? Fringe is in. It's nice as an accent piece, don't you think? Yeah. I, I, I would wear a skirt, for example, with a solid top. Um, I wouldn't, or, you know, sometimes the fringe dresses. Oh my God, remember. Oh, shoes. shoes. And I have that. I have a similar necklace. In. Wait, remember years ago? We're going we're gonna to date ourselves right now. I had a pair of boots cowboy boots with the fringes hanging off the back and I bet they would be so popular right now. They're back in. They you are. You didn't get rid of them, did you? I did. Okay. <laughs> Let's not do this with fringe though, okay? What are we not doing? Let's all oh, remember. Oh boy, can't wait for this one. Don't take your denim shorts and add fringe. Ooh. Especially. <laughs> that's crazy. Here, here's a faux pas with floral and fringe. Oh, and that's We're a cute little jacket, that. but that's just it's worn cute. completely Look, The pants are nice for a solid shirt. Yeah. The jacket's nice, Okay. but, but not all together. And um, we're not cowgirls, mm, right? I guess if you're out west, maybe she's, maybe she is. I don't know, maybe we're she... not flappers. <laughs> no. Okay. No, that's Halloween. I think that's a good Halloween costume, but that's not for every day. What is that? In I don't her know hair? what she's got going what on there. The... She fringed her hair and fringed oh, her dress. So Lordy, let's not Lordy, do that. Lordy. And this is very, this is cute, of course, but that's not that's not today. That's not the no, modern day Renaissance stuff. woman. <laughs> okay. Right. Next. Next one we have. This is kind of cool, and it's something I would wear. If it's what do we have here? Together. What? We have wide leg trousers. <gasps> oh, all right. That look is coming back. I, you know, I'm not. I'm not a big huge fan I, of that. I knew you were going to say that. I'm not a fan. I'm a big woman. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm not petite and thin and like. I think you can, you have to have a certain physique to look good. That's my opinion. That's me. 
I'm not wearing any palazzo pants <laughs> so so quickly. <laughs> My it pajama just, pants are loose like that, but that's about well, it. Well, that's what I was going to wear. say. Yeah. It starts to break down when you put a pattern on those oh, wide leg pants. Gosh. Oh gosh. We need gosh. to remember we're not going to go out in pajamas. Oh. <laughs> We are not rock stars. <laughs> David Bowie. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's Shout out hysterical. David Bowie. Well, see, those look like pajama pants. Those are, yes. I would wear those, and I but do. But they're not. Well, they're I, not. I just, I'm not a fan, so. Yeah, me. All right. I agree. Okay. We'll ixnay that one. So far, so up to that, it was good. Ah, uh, pastels. Pastels are coming back. Oh, I love pastels. Pastels are pretty. Very feminine. You yeah. saw it all the over Oscars. the red carpet at the Oscars. Everyone. Especially our big winner here. She yes. A beautiful gown on. It also is pastel makeup. Yeah, see, I have a tough time with that. I cannot do pastel makeup. I, I will look would. too washed out. Ooh, <laughs> I can't. Oh boy, remember, wait, that reminds me of your sister's wedding. <laughs> I did the makeup for that. The blue oh, eyeshadow. My sister's <laughs> wedding. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty palette, though. I like the mix of it's the different well, colors. Well, it should be an accessory, Very, right? Beautiful. Really, I like that a lot. You can just accessorize with a purse or a pair of pumps yeah. in something pastel. Okay. I like pastels. But can we just say our pets are not our accessories? <laughs> Please don't Pink dye poodles. your dogs. <laughs> I love she it. dyed her hair and, and her, her dog. dog in a pink Cadillac. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Why? It's so funny. Why? I don't know. It's wrong. Wrong on a lot of different oh levels. My Last, right. but not least, Last but not we least, we have cropped. Cropped. Cropped oh, is coming God. back. Crop I can't tops, do cropped. Crop jackets. And I don't know about cropped pants. Some of them are cropped. Well, I have to tell you. See, the only time I'll wear a crap, a crap. <laughs> <laughs> you never Oops. wear crap. You it's are very TV. stylish. Sorry. I've never seen you crop. Top is when I wear a little camisole underneath it so that I don't have to necessarily show off my midriff. My daughter can get away with it. You might, but not. That's it's the not thing. Happening. You have to make sure you have the right Layer. body for it. Layer. And, and it's, a, it's appropriate. Yeah. Let's not have a saying on there that's just not appropriate either. Yeah, like crap. <laughs> <laughs> like crap. And last, okay, here we okay. go. The finale. Yes, the finale. This here we woman go. is wrong on so many levels. Let's Pastel, fringe, and oh, crop. Oh, boy. Let's not do this. <laughs> and is go out it? shopping. Oh, lordy. Okay. And that's it. So that was right. a little bit of fun. Well, there you have it. Those are the fashions and the Fashion. trends Do's for the don't. spring of 2014. So, um, all right. I think that that's is... That's all we have time for. We are now closing shop, right? Yes. The Everything Lydia show is officially recessed. Adjourned. Adjourned. Well, and, you know, recess adjourned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're going to... Hopefully see you again next Monday and every single Monday at 2.30 or so <laughs> right here on The Daily Blue. Mm -hmm. And if there happens to be a legal question that you have, certainly you can go to my website, AskLadyTheLawyer.com. And if you would like to watch this show again, just go right to TheDailyBlue.com and become a member that. of our page and The Daily Blue page. I have to and always that. remember to check your ordinary at the door and go live that remarkable life. <laughs> we'll see ya. See ya. <laughs>